so I'll be talking about uh, how to garble RAM programs in the parallel RAM model, and this is done in a fully black box way, depending only on uh, what we functions. So this is uh, joint work with Rafi Ostrovsky. I'm Steve, and uh, what, what I'll be doing is I'll just be, you know, uh, first motivating the problem, uh, and then giving you uh, some reviews and definitions uh, and, and what we achieve. Uh, I'll go into the main construction, then give you a, a flavor of the proof, and finally conclude. So just to motivate, and I, I think we've seen some of this already in the, in the, in the previous two talks, well, what about you know, com computing on encrypted data? Right, if uh, Alice here is a client and she wants to compute some, uh, some data, some store some data on, on some server uh, that Bob holds, um, you know, she wants the server to compute some function f of x, but uh, she doesn't want necessarily the server to learn uh, what, her input, what, what her input is, what her function is, what her data is. And this is done on, you know, perhaps a really big, big server, right? So uh, this server can have lots of cores, can execute lots of things in parallel, multi-threaded programs. This is looking at things in the parallel RAM model, okay? So what can we do, right? Uh, and so, so sort of the, the overall motivation is to do secure RAM computation, namely that, um, you know, the secure RAM computation allows you to have persistent memory. You know, you can store things, you can retrieve things, uh, it stays there. Uh, there is a potentially exponential gap. For example, if you're going to do binary search, uh, it's a lot quicker than uh, if you wanted to do uh, uh, using uh, just a big circuit on everything. Uh, it could be input-dependent running time, and furthermore, it's also a, a natural uh, model for programs. Okay, so uh, the first sort of generic compiler was suggested by Ostrovsky and Shub, and there has been a, a long line of work on secure RAM computation. Uh, interactive secure computation was, for example, uh, first implemented in this work by uh, Gordon et al. Uh, and, you know, there's been a long line of work of uh, secure RAM computation in the interactive model, right? But what about the non-interactive model? Well, so in this work, we're gonna look, look at this uh, in the non-interactive model and also make it parallelizable and makes only use of uh, black box use of, uh, you know, some underlying one-way functions, some PRF. And, well, the reason why, um, you know, black box is, traffic is attractive, I mean, in addition to, you know, black box is the new black, uh, is that if you wanted to implement this using, um, uh, you know, uh, let's say AES, you can leverage uh, hardware AES or, you know, other hardware uh, techniques that, uh, that makes only black box use. You don't need to ha actually have the underlying code. Okay, so uh, that's, the, that's the sort of overall uh, subject of my, of my talk, and it's gonna be, uh, there's the RAM program, it's black box, it's parallel, and we're going to garble it. Okay, so uh, just to give you a couple of quick reviews, and, and uh, you've seen this in the, in the previous two talks, so I'll just go over this uh, real quick. Uh, garbled circuits uh, is, is a method of taking a circuit, garbling it into some garbled format C prime. You can take an input, you can garble that into some garbled input X prime, and then you can have this evaluation algorithm, right? And the evaluation algorithm, the correctness property says that uh, if you evaluate the garbled circuit on the garbled input, you should get the, uh, the same as, as you would get on the, uh, the clear circuit. And privacy states that uh, you should uh, learn nothing else beyond this. Okay, uh, what about oblivious RAM, right? I mean, this is the OT and ORAM session, so I should talk to you a little bit about oblivious RAM and, and why it's important in this context, right? Oblivious RAM helps you uh, hide the access pattern of the program, and so if you actually wanted to make sure that the server doesn't actually learn anything about your computation, right, you wanna hide the fact that, for example, your program is, program is perhaps taking this secret if branch as opposed to this else branch, right, because this might be dependent on some secret data, right? So Oblivious RAM was introduced by uh, Goldreich and Ostrovsky, and there's been, you know, many, many subsequent works in, in various different models, and basically what it, what it offers you is, is given a, a, a RAM program P, you can compile it into a functionally equivalent program P prime that has oblivious access pattern. Uh, and, and because we're, we're looking at parallel garbled RAM, what about parallel oblivious RAM? So in the uh, parallel RAM model, there's been a couple of works. So uh, at TCC last year, uh, Boyle Chung and Pass and Chen Lin and Tesaro uh, talked about, you know, introducing uh, parallel oblivious RAM. Uh, and then later last year at, at AsiaCrypt, uh, Doc Mansolet et al. Uh, further introduced, uh, uh, you know, uh, looking at parallel RAM and the network, network RAM model, and uh, some up and coming work by uh, Kartik and John um, also sort of looks at you know, improving the efficiency of parallel oblivious RAM. 
So, you know, given that there is such nice research on parallel oblivious RAM, let's see how to do it uh, non-interactively. Right, so uh, in the gobble RAM world, right, so just the, the plain RAM model, not necessarily parallel, uh, this was introduced in a work with uh, uh, Rafi uh, at year 2013. Uh, there's been a lot of subsequent works on this area, both in the uh, realm where you're only assuming uh, minimal assumptions, you know, from one-way functions or PRFs, uh, and also uh, interesting, you know, uh, relations to uh, compactness, reusability, and, and I.O. And uh, uh, last year at, uh, at TCC, uh, Boyle, Chung, and Pass also introduced the notion of parallel gobble RAM, uh, and, and they managed to achieve this uh, using IBE, and, and this was done where you actually have to uh, have the code of IBE running in, in, inside your circuits. So what we're going to try to do in this talk is we're going to show how to get parallel gobble RAM using only, uh, you know, black box use of any PRF. Okay, so, uh, you know, what is parallel gobble RAM? Uh, what can you do with it? Well. Uh, this is what it looks like. It looks very similar to, to gobbled circuits, except now you have some, some parallel RAM program uh, P. Uh, you have some uh, input I. You have some data that you want to also gobble D. And there, there, are, there are algorithms that, that can help you gobble all of these. And again, you want this correctness property where you know, the, uh, the, the garbled evaluation matches the, the, the plane evaluation. And you also want to have this security property which, which says that you can actually simulate. Okay, and I'm gonna actually uh, give you the, the weaker definition as well, which is that the simulator, not only does it know the, uh, the you know, security parameter, the size of the database, and the running times of the programs, uh, but it also has the, I mean, it, and of course the outputs of the programs, but it also has the memory access, right? So for full security, you don't wanna give it the memory access, but uh, you know, just to make th uh, things similar for this talk, let's, let's pretend that uh, you know, the simulator can actually have access to memory access, and then uh, in, the full, you know, in the full construction, we uh, actually uh, d deny this from the uh, simulator. But the simulator should, uh, in, in terms of security, be able to generate uh, a simulated uh, garbled database, garbled programs, garbled inputs, uh, that's indistingu indistinguishable from the, 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 uh, the uh, real one. Okay. So now that I've given you the definition, let me uh, go ahead and state our main theorem, which is that, you know, assuming the existence of uh, one-way functions, there exists a fully black box, so it's black box both in the construction and in the proof, uh, construction of a M processor garbled PRAM uh, scheme for arbitrary M processor PRAM program. So if you have a parallel program that uses like, you know, M processors, you can have a garbled version of it that also uses M processors. And with polylog overhead in uh, the size of the database, size of the input, running time, uh, the number of processors, and we get uh, this sort of uh, multiplicative overhead in the size of the database. You also in uh, increase the size of the input and the, and the running time. Well, and unfortunately, it's not exactly compact in the garbled program size. Uh, the garbled program size is actually going to be proportional to the running time. I mean, we would love to have a solution which is actually uh, proportional to the size of the, you know, to the size of the program as opposed to the running time of the program. Uh, but, but this is what we get in, in our construction. Uh, and, and, and later on, I'll talk about the open problem of, you know, how do we actually get this, uh, uh, you know, succinctly. Okay, so now let me go ahead and jump into the, uh, the main construction. Okay, so the, so the main construction overview is, Let's start with an arbitrary PRM program and let's show how to garble it, right? Uh, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna actually apply some sort of oblivious parallel RAM uh, compiler to it first that provides uniform access pattern. And I put a uniform star there because we don't actually need it to be actually, actually uniform. But as long as, you know, the, 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 the access pattern can be uh, bounded using turnoff bounds, it's, it's all okay. So, uh, you know, you do this compiler and you get a uniform access uh, oblivious PRM program. Uh, and then what do you do next? Well, uh, then we do this uh, uh, garbled, tree, uh, garbled tree strategy, and I'll talk to you about you know, what, what this is in just a bit. Uh, and using this garbled tree strategy, we can get uh, parallel garbled RAM, right? So this is where uh, uh, a lot of the magic is hiding, and so that's what I'll be focused uh, on for the rest of the talk. Okay, so uh, as a starting point, let's actually start with this sort of garbled tree uh, idea uh, and this was used in, in uh, a couple of previous papers, and it, actually this has been quite useful. So we, both uh, in the previous talk and also in uh, Nico's talk yesterday, uh, you, you saw you know, the, the usefulness of having uh, like a tree of garbled circuits, and then you evaluate down one of these paths. 
right? And it also has a lot of you know, interesting and unexpected connections, uh, let's say, for example, to IBE. Okay, so let's review what this Grubble uh, tree construction uh, really looks like, and, and I'll give you the flavor of it that was introduced in, in this uh, GLL work. Okay, so uh, in, in this work, you had uh, basically, uh, in order to do garbled RAM, right, this is not garbled parallel RAM, this is just garbled RAM, you have a bunch of you know, garbled CPU steps, and you also have garbled memory, but it's organized in this tree fashion, right? And it's organized in this tree fashion where each node contains a whole bunch of garbled circuits, and these garbled circuits can talk to each other, right? So um, basically, each circuit in a node can speak the language of other you know, circuits in this node, as well as uh, a couple of the child circuits, right? So if you were to do this uh, just you know, one time, right? If you, if you only wanted to, do, to garble one CPU step, right? You would just have a tree and there would be one circuit for uh, each node and you would just go down one path and then that would be the end of it, right? But if you have multiple CPU steps, you would need, uh, A, you need some way to link, them, link these different multiple CPU steps together and B, you wanna make sure that, well, because you don't know, you don't know a priori which, which path you're gonna take, you're gonna have to you know, stuff enough of these circuits into each node so that you don't uh, ever run out, right? So this is called like the sort of the overflow problem, right? And so basically, if you wanna look at the, the combinatorics of this, uh, you wanna basically connect the if parent to you know, more or less uh, be able to speak to about I, you know, half of I, right? Because uh, if, 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 uh, if, you, if you've already consumed you know, I circuits here, you expect half the time you go left and half the time you go right, right? Because if, you're, if you have uniform access pattern, you know, half the time you go left, half the time you go right. So uh, you expect to need to speak to about, you know, uh, your roughly I over tooth child. Uh, but because, uh, you know, uh, when, when you throw, you know, balls into bins, it, it doesn't always land, you know, exactly like this way. Uh, you need to have, a, you know, a, a little buffer of delta to make sure that you don't uh, run out. Okay, so that's sort of the, you know, the overall sort of, you know, combinatorial construction of, of uh, this couple tree, and let's you know, sort of see how we actually go down a path, right? And so the circuit logic is actually really, really simple. Um, you know, if I have some, uh, uh, some, some location that I want, want to read, uh, like from here, well, what I do is I, I say, all right, well, this says, all right, I, I want to read this location, right? So it just has the uh, key for this root, uh, and then the memory location is, uh, you know, it's encoded inside as, a, as part of the input to the garbled circuit, and all this garbled circuit does is it just says, all right, well, do I need to go left or do I need to go right? So I just look at the ith bit of the input, right? So the, the, the root looks at the first bit of the input, right? And if it's a zero, I go left, and if it's a one, I go right, and, and so on and so forth. So, so, the, so the logic of these uh, circuits are actually quite simple. You just, you know, figure out do I need to go left or right, pack up the keys I need to pack up, and pass it down to the next circuit. Okay, so that was the, uh, you know, th that's an overview of the, uh, the, the double RAM scheme of GLO. Uh, what about, you know, parallelizing this, right? Uh, one thing we can do, right, is just, let's just make all the circuits, like, you know, wider, right? If, if we, instead of reading one memory location, we want to read M memory location within one, uh, within one step, Let's make everything just wider, right? So here's, here's M CPU circuits, and, we, and they want to read M locations within one, one single step. So, you know, just widen the circuits and, you know, carefully uh, use turn off bound to, to, to size it off. And that, that idea more or less works. And, and I'll go into the sort of a de detail of, like, you know, where the subtlety comes in and why doesn't this exactly work. Okay, so, uh, you, know, each, you know, each CPU has a uniformly round location that they might want to read. Uh, these locations might still have collisions, but, uh, you know, ex existing works actually show how you can actually guarantee uh, M, M unique locations uh, reading, uh, you know, uh, when, you, when you're doing this read. Okay. So here are the details of, of, of doing this in parallel. Uh, the root circuit will have uh, sort of inputs for M keys, right? So M is the number of, uh, you know, parallel uh, CPUs you have, uh, and it, 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 it's going to route where basically where each of these keys go. Right? And you'd expect you know, half of them to go left and you expect half of them to go right, and, that, and that's great, right? I mean, so, well, let, let's first do like, the stupidest thing possible, right? Which is just widen every single uh, circuit by a factor of M, right? That certainly will, will guarantee that you'll, you'll have enough uh, you know, circuit space to, to hold all the keys, but you know, I mean, that's, that's not great, right? Because this will actually over increase the overall memory size to M times N, when we actually want like, a polylog dependency, right? So this is, this is too much. Okay. 
So how about we widen each circuit by the expected number of keys that will pass by, right? Because, you know, uh, if, you're, if you're doing this, uh, you know, uh, reading left and right, you know, half of, the, half of it will go left, half of it will go right. And, you know, that, that more or less works. I mean, like, that, that more or less uh, gets you what you want, except there is the subtle interference with the circuit consumption rate of the underlying GLL scheme. So the issue here is that when, um, uh, you know, when uh, the, uh, when, when the number of parallel processors is, uh, you know, uh, comparable to log n, to poly log n, uh, you're going to be reading a lot, you know, you're, you're going to be consuming a lot of these uh, lower circuits. And in the original GLO construction, it wasn't exactly, you know, um, prepared to actually handle all of these uh, you know, sort of, uh, you know, p parallel consumptions. Okay. So we need to actually be a little bit careful here and actually use uh, techniques from like, you know, uh, uh, occupancy and concentration bound, uh, co uh, these concentration bounds to actually designate a special level where we actually sw switch the strategy, right? So we, we can't use this exact strategy where we just, all right, you know, you, you, the, the first circuit is of size M, these are size, you know, M, M over two, these are M over four and so on. Like that straight up, if you, if you just do it like that, that doesn't exactly uh, work out in, in terms of the analysis, but if you actually introduce this special level, uh, then things will work out. Okay, so let, let's see how we, how we do this sort of carefully. Okay, uh, choosing a level. So, so, how do, so what kind of level do I want? And basically, I want a level such that within a single parallel step, that when you're doing these accesses, no more than B access paths will go through a single node at that level, right? So let's say it's uh, this level, right? What's the probability that more than capital B of these access paths will go through exactly this node, right? That's some probability. I can bound this probability, and I want that probability to be negligible. And you know, obviously, if, if I choose uh, my le my level to be like you know, the lowest level, lo level, then of course, right? I mean, it, it's going to be zero because at the lowest level, you know, there's only going to be one at most one, right? But I don't want to choose the lowest level. I actually want to choose a level that's uh, that's still high enough that there are still less than uh, m nodes, where m is the number of uh, parallel processors. And by doing this sort of splitting, you know, the, the higher levels and the lower levels, this exactly handles this, the subtle issue where M is small versus M is large uh, compared to this log N factor. Okay, so now that we have this level, what do we do, right? Near the leaves, uh, so, so I can tell you what, what, what happens near the leaves. Well, near the leaves, uh, we're just going to basically instantiate one copy of GLO per subtree. And what about above the level B? Well, above the level B, we're going to do that strategy that we were talking about earlier, right? Where the root has, you know, M, uh, you, know, uh, you know, size M, M keys, and then the next level has M over two keys, and so on and so forth, right? So basically, you expect, uh, you know, M over two the I keys to appear there. And again, we need this, uh, you know, uh, a similar sort of half plus epsilon factor and plus a small over, over, overflow buffer Q. Basically, you know, you just add in these uh, additional factors, and, and this can guarantee that the probability that you're going to have too many uh, CPUs trying to read down one path to be also negligible, right? So these are the techniques that we're going to use to avoid this, uh, this overflow problem. Okay, so putting it all together, how do we, uh, you know, perform one of these parallel reads? Near the top, you activate all paths in parallel down to the calculated level. Right, so you're gonna you know, you're gonna you know read the top, and then you're gonna uh, go read the, the the children and and the grandchildren and so on and so forth, and this goes all the way until the uh, you know this calculated level, and then below this level, you're gonna actually run uh, sequentially in parallel, right, and by that I mean right, so each subtree, so so let's say let's say for example I want to read these four locations, right, these two are within this subtree, these two are within this subtree. And so I'm just going to do these, you know, sequentially in the sense that within each subtree it's sequential, right? So first I'm going to read uh, this one, and I'm gonna, uh, first I'm going to read this one. But because there are less than m subtrees, I can do each subtree in parallel. Okay, so this is my, you know, sort of first parallel sequential read, and the second one is going to be uh, this other one, right? So this other one is going to read uh, these other, other two locations. Again, it's in parallel. With it, uh, across the subtrees, but within each subtree, it's, it's sequential. Okay, so if you do that, then uh, we can actually you know, get all the keys and still not run to the overflow problem, and uh, everything's great. 
Okay, so uh, let's you know take a look at, at you know how this uh, actually sort of works out, and I'll give you a, a flavor of the, uh, the proof sketch. Okay, so uh, building the simulator, uh, the simulator you know uh, for for the the, the uh, full security gets only the output, the running time uh, of any arbitrary uh, RAM program, and the first thing we're going to do is we're going to just feed it through the oblivious parallel RAM simulator, right? And that's going to give us um, a simulated memory access output and running time. And now that we have a simulated memory access, we can actually feed this into the, uh, the, you know, the unprotected memory access simulator. Uh, and that's exactly what we're gonna do. So we're, we're gonna actually perform, if you actually you know, sort of go into the details and, and uh, look into the paper, we're gonna perform a sequence of hybrids similar to GLO, where we replace the garbled circuits on the tree with simulated ones. Okay, so you, 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 you walk through the se sequence of hybrids, and you get the simulated garbled tree, uh, you get a simulated memory, uh, and now everything is simulated and it's, uh, it, it's indistinguishable from the uh, real sort of garbled, uh, uh, garbled uh, program and database. Okay, well, the, uh, the key technical point here is what about the overflow problem, right? And this is sort of the, the main combinatorial challenge that we had to deal with this, in this paper. And sort of how do we choose the bounding level B and how do we analyze, you know, what's the actual overhead, right? Because we, we still want low overhead, but at the same time we need to choose this level B. And, and you know, spoiler alert, uh, we choose B to be roughly, you know, log uh, the number of processors over C, some, some constant. Uh, okay, so let me just give you a sketch of, you know, what the, uh, the combinatorics will look like. Uh, so why is the overhead polylog, right? Because, you know, we, we promised polylog overhead, so, so let's see what it is. Uh, on the top half, right, you activate all paths in parallel down to level B, uh, and if you let WI represent the circuit size, uh, you get this equation, uh, and you know, this equation basically comes out of estimating you know, what, what these w's, I, WIs are, right? The WIs, they're basically you know, M keys uh, times this, you know, this factor, uh, followed by uh, this you know, additive uh, key buffer factor, right? And if you bound that, you get uh, this bound where uh, this is, you know, e to the, you know, two times b times epsilon uh, times this factor. And if you choose, right, if you choose b correctly and if you choose epsilon correctly, you can actually take this and show that this is, you know, in fact good. Okay. Uh, and then what about the ones, you know, below this level? Uh, again, right, because each subtree is being activated in parallel, well, what is this, right? I mean, it's just, you know, two to the b plus one times uh, capital B, right, which is the number of uh, actual paths you need to uh, evaluate times the cost of GLO, but because we chose this level B such that uh, the number of nodes in that level is less than M, you can just assign one processor to do, you know, one of these um, parallel uh, executions. Okay, great. So uh, why won't the, the paths overflow these circuits? Well, I mean, I, I sort of give you a, a flavor of, of, of that during the talk, but, uh, you know, if you want to look at the details, uh, just uh, uh, check out the paper. Uh, and, and with that, I'll, I'll uh, conclude. So, uh, what are the open problems here, right? Uh, one great open problem is, you know, how do you get succinctness in the terms of uh, program length, right? Uh, so there are, there are a, a, you know, a long line of uh, works on uh, succinctness and reusability and, and I.O., and, and these are from uh, stronger assumptions. Can we get this from weaker assumptions? That's one question. Uh, and and uh, so like I said, you know, I mean, that, that's, you know, these, this is one of the things you can get from stronger assumptions, but what are some other things you can get from stronger assumptions? Right? So if you assume the computational Diffie-Hellman assumption and you combine the, you know, the garbled tree idea, uh, you can get IB like, like we saw in, uh, in, in, in Nico's talk yesterday. Uh, and what about other distributed models of RAM computation? Right? Uh, you know, PRAM is not the only one, uh, there's many other uh, models. What about those? Okay, and just to, to wrap up, uh, in, in the talk you saw a way to uh, garbled RAM programs uh, in a black box parallel way. And this allows for non-interactive secure RAM computation in, uh, in parallel. All right, thanks.